Hello everyone, welcome to another session for our question series for Nabad. Uh, for today's topic, I've chosen a very important uh, topic, which is on the Nabad's annual report of 2018 and 2019, right? My name is Hansa Nora Sangma and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture honors and I've also completed my master's in nematology and agriculture. And please don't forget to subscribe, press the bell icon. And if you've liked the video, don't forget to press the thumbs up button as well. And please share it with your friends who have is giving the exam. Right, so first and foremost, we need to understand what a NABARD is. Because since you guys are giving the NABARD exam, so it's very important for you all to at least have a brief idea uh, about the facts and the history of NABARD and what it actually does with all, uh, when was it created and all. All about its history, right? So let's just understand what this NABARD, the uh, NABARD is, okay? So NABARD, it, it is a development bank focusing, which primarily uh, based on the rural sectors of the country. It is just an apex banking institution which provides finance for especially agriculture and rural development, all right? So at present, its headquarter is in Mumbai, all right? And the chairman is Dr. Har Harsh Kumar Bhanwala, all right? It is a statutory body which was established in the year 1982, which was under the Parliamentary Act of Nas National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development Act, which was in 1981, right? And it was done to support the Indian rural economy with credit facility. Uh, RBI was the apex body before the formation of NABARD, okay, which led to the formation of uh, this NABARD. And as the apex so NABARD became the Apex Development Financial Institution of India and as well as the NABARD's role is just basically the continuation of RBI's role but uh, it's mainly in the sphere for agriculture and rural development, right? So it's basically it's mostly responsible for the formation of these uh, cottage industries and uh, the rural pr uh, programs and the projects and mostly for the rural development. Okay, so let's go on to our first question. Uh, our first question is based on the gross value added. Just read the question together. As per the NABARD annual report 2018-2019, what is India's GVA growth, right? So the uh, options are uh, A, 5.2, B, 6.6, C, 9.1, D, 6.9, and E, 4.3. So the correct answer for this is number B, which is 6.6. .6. Remember this, this is the gross value added of uh, India by according to the NABARD annual report, right? So there are many facts and figures in this report. It's a huge report. So you need to be very uh, meticulous and very clear about all these facts uh, since exam is also nearing try to revise as you go by as the days goes by try to revise as much as you can because these things you keep on forgetting so to remember make and make keep on making notes small notes uh, beside you and even now if you're watching this video please don't forget to keep a note beside you so that you can uh, have you can jot down the important points that I'm gonna highlight as well as you can practice these questions along with me right so let's just talk about this state of economy uh, as per the NABARD report okay so the Indian economy was recorded a growth rate of 6.8 in 2018-2019 moderated from 7.2 the previous year so it means that the Indian economy uh, the growth of Indian economy was decreased okay in this year of 2018 to 2009 suppose if you see in this graph i've given the growth rate of indian economy from 2015 till 2018 19 all right as you can see there has been a decrease continuous decrease of the growth rate so remember these points there might be questions uh they won't be asking on what was the growth rate in 2015 to 16 most probably they might be asking you to compare between the between last year's stats and this year's stats all right so these are the two uh points that you can remember 7.2 which was last year and there was a decrease to 6.8 all right so th the previous question as you can see was on the gross value added okay so what is gross value added okay so gross value added is a measure 
of value of goods and services which is produced in an area industry or sector of an economy right so to make it more clear we have this uh, we have this equation so suppose if you uh, just calculate this you will get the gpp right where the sp is subsidies on production tp is taxes on production right and the overall gva growth is 6.6 uh, which was the answer for this Okay, and the GVA at basic prices for 2018, it is specifically for this agriculture, forestry and fishing, which is the agriculture and the light sector. They stood at approximately 18.55 lakh crore and it is estimated to grow by 2.9%. All right. Uh, but if you can see in this uh, table, I've given the different sectors along with the years from 2016, 2017, 18 till 2018 to 19 report. If you can just see the GVA has been decreasing over the years. Okay, remember this and the, see there might be questions on which of the sectors, uh, specifically on the sectors, which are uh, the contribution on the GVA as well. So uh, try to remember the their contributions, uh, whether like for example, in agriculture, it has a contribution of, of about 2.9, in industry, 6.9, services, which is the highest, 7.5, all right? So questions might come, what is the share of the agriculture in the GVA at basic prices in the year 2018 or in the year 2017 or 18, anything can be asked. So just be prepared with all these facts and data, okay? Um, all right. For overall GDP, the overall GDP for this year was 6.8, remember, and it was decreased as well over the years. The report says that there was a decline in the consumer price index from an average of 6% in 2014. It means that there was a 6%, the consumer price index was 6%, but in 2018 to the 19 report, the average came up to 3.4%, okay, which is lesser than the RBI's medium target, all right? So this year, they did not cross more than 4%. It was only 3.4%, right? Why was there a moderation? It was mostly because of the slow growth or the slacking off in the agriculture sector. So from this data, you can just see that all of these has been growing, all right? Industries have been growing this year. Uh, okay, services, it got reduced, but in agriculture, it has been a really drastic decline in the GVE basic prices. So from 2016, it's about 6.3, but then in 2018, it's been only 2.9, all right? And moving on, there's another important thing which I haven't highlighted here. So it's about the fiscal def deficit. So if you guys know what the fiscal deficit for this year, for uh, according to NABAD for 2018, 2019, please don't forget to comment in the comment section so that I know if you guys know or not, okay? And um, the target as well, okay? So what was the target for, for the uh, 2018 and 19, and what was the uh, actual results for? 2018 and 19, all right? So if you guys know the answer, please don't forget to comment. Moving on, the gross non-performing assets, GNPA, ratio of SCBs they declined from 11.5 in March 2018 to 10.8 in September 2018 and 9.3 in March 2019. And it has been expected to decline further. So along with that, we have another uh, important point on the Indian economy. So it may be on the gross capital formation. I'll just write it here. Gross capital formation has also reduced from uh, 2011 to 12. It was about uh, 39.5. And on 2018 to 2009, sorry, 2017 to 2018, it was 32.8. All right, so for the gross capital formation, they might have a question on this. Okay, although this uh, the data is for uh, not for it's 2017 to 18. That's the latest data, but they might ask a question on this as well, right? So let's move on to the next question. 
question number two says for the year 2018-2019 in the BART annual report, some states, they made a substantial budgetary allocations, right, which is more than 40%. For capital outlay on agriculture and the light sectors, right? So which of these from these options are the states that has made the highest budgetary allocations, right? The options here says A, Punjab, B, Telangana, C, Kerala, D, Bihar, E, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so in the next slide, I have just roughly discussed about this budgetary allocations, the current situation of the budgetary allocation as per the NABARD report. So the top states in the budgetary allocations were Andhra Pradesh, okay, with 66.1%, which was followed by Gujarat with 58%, Orissa, 46%, Jharkhand, Karnataka, and West Bengal. So these are some of the states which, uh, which had the percentage of above 40%, all right? The states with share of capital outlay between 30 and 40, it means they are just with the average percentage. Uh, they are Maharashtra, Telangana, Assam, Madhya Pradesh, and Bihar, okay? And these states were less than 40%, 40 or 30%, right? And the, uh, these states are in U UP, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Chhattisgarh, Kerala, and Punjab. Okay, so the lowest was in Punjab, which they made it only about 4.8. So questions might come from any of these. Uh, most probably, uh, it might be the top ones or the lowest. Try to stress more on these. And at least the top three, try to remember, okay? And moderates, just try to remember the name. It's very hard to remember. So just make the right initials of each of these uh, states. And then it'll be much more easier for you all to remember, okay? All right. Let's go to question number three. As per the report on 27 March 2019 on Pradhan Mantri uh, Jandan Yojana, about 35.27 crore accounts have been opened. What is the share of semi-urban and rural banks? Okay, so what is the share out of all out of these 35.27 crore accounts? What is the share of the semi-urban and the rural banks? All right. So the options are 67. B, 3%, uh, C, 59%, D, 33%, E, none of the above. The right answer for this is number C, which makes about 59%. Okay, uh, let's just talk about uh, this Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana. Okay, this is this Yojana or the scheme is the national mission on the financial inclusion in India. Okay, it's one of the biggest and the largest financial inclusion mission in the world. All right. And it was launched on 2014, on August 28th, right? And the main objective was to ensure that at least one basic bank account is present in each family in the whole country. Okay, so uh, in this slide, I've given some of the... Uh, just briefly ab uh, about some of the facts on this uh, scheme. The uh, the first access to financial facilities, namely banking, savings and deposit accounts, remittance, credit, it provides insurance, pensions, and in an affordable manner, as well as the financial literacy and financial counseling, all of that as well, okay? And it can be opened in any bank branch or business correspondent outlet with zero balance uh, if you want to open a bank account you can open a bank account with a zero balance right and it was very beneficial for the common man as well as the businessman as well as for the states and the central government okay on once an account is opened the account holder they get a debit card under the rupee scheme all right and the account holder will be provided with the zero balance bank account Right, the account holder, they get about 30,000 uh, insurance coverage uh, from the LIC. And after six months, the opening of the bank account, holders can avail the drafts up to 5,000. Right, the, the mobile banking through National Unified USSD platform and easy transfer of money across India beneficiaries of government will get direct benefit transfer in this accounts right so in this table i've given some of the uh the basic um 2018 2019 developments uh, in the scheme the first one is in the public the share in the public sector right so the number of beneficiaries at the rural semi-urban bank branches 
they are uh, 15.24 right by the public sector banks number of total beneficiaries 28.13 uh, this is not that important uh, in number of rupee debit cards issued to beneficiaries which is also enclosed is around 22.97 so in this way these are some of the sectors for, for regional and rural sectors we have 5.99 in the number of total beneficiaries, right? And with the number of beneficiaries, semi urban uh, central bank branches, it's about 5.303 crore. And the number of repay debit cards issued beneficiaries, there are 3.86. The grand total is very important. Try to remember the grand total at least. The grand total would be uh, 20.9 for the number of beneficiaries at rural urban um, banks. And for the Number of total beneficiaries would make about 35.27, right? And the number of rupee debit card issued beneficiaries would be around 27.91, right? Uh, in the same way, this board had uh, come up with a lot of funds and the schemes um, with, to help the financial inclusion as well as the sustainable development of the rural uh, in the rural development program, right? So some of the uh, schemes uh, they have collaborated with the central government or with other uh, international organizations as well. So some of the schemes that they have Nabart had launched in the previous years were this one of these was this Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana, which is a very important scheme. So the one thing that I found important was. Uh, as I was reading it, the governments of it, the governments of India they uh, have recently uh, launched the world's largest healthcare pro healthcare program, which is known as the Ayushman Bharat. Okay. Right. This is uh, this was supposedly to be the world's largest healthcare program. So these might also come in the current affairs because during the year of 2018 to 2019. Right. So try to remember all these. And there's another one called the Pradhan Mantri Asha. It was done to protect the farmers' income. The name is Pradhan Mantri Asha. This is just an acronym. So try to find out the full form of these. Okay. Moving on to the fourth question, when was the long-term irrigation fund uh, LTIF formed? This is one of the very important uh, irrigation funds and one of the important funds of uh, Nabar. So questions might also come from here. And there's another one called the micro irrigation on the dairy, um, fisheries as well. In every aspect, there are different, different funds. So try to cover all of these funds, uh, at least have a rough idea and about the when was it formed, the history, the background behind it so that uh, you'll be able to know. And when the question comes, you'll be able to answer them well. OK, so let's just read this question. Uh, when was long term irrigation fund formed? Okay. A 2014, B 2018, C 2016, D 2015 and E 2000. 12. So the correct answer for this is 2016. All right, it was done. It was formed during the year of 2016 to 2017. Okay, so let's just briefly read about this long-term irrigation fund. Um, uh, this the Honorable Union Finance Minister they announced the long-term irrigation fund in the Union Budget during the year period year period of 2016 to 2017. Okay, so it was done for the fast tracking the 99 identified medium and major irrigation projects, which was spread across the 18 uh, states in mission made by December 2019. All right. So who is uh, in control of these? The, it is under the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. All right. And these are the nodal ministry which has been designated to coordinate and facilitate completion of the project. So the question might come on these as well. Or the question might also come on the 99 identified medium and major irrigation projects. OK, so it might come on the state as well or it might come on the year. OK, so let's just uh, briefly talk more about these uh, long term irrigation fund. Right. So why was it done? It was done to address the problems which were associated with perennial irrigation water crisis in the rural area. OK, so the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Re Rejuvenation, they signed an agreement with NABARC to operationalize the long term irrigation fund. So it was an agreement with this ministry as well as in NABARC. OK, and this LTIF, it was instituted in Nabat uh, as a part of this Prime Minister uh, 
कृषि सिंचाई योजना ओके सो द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस इज इट एम्स टू ब्रिज द रिसोर्सेस गैप एंड फैसिलिटेट कंप्लीशन ऑफ 99 प्रायोरिटाइज्ड इरिगेशन प्रोजेक्ट एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना ड्यूरिंग द ईयर 2016 टिल 2020 ओके रिमेंबर देयर आर वाइल्ड 54 प्रोजेक्ट्स दे वर आइडेंटिफाइड बाय 2017 to 18 and the remaining 45 projects have been unidentified but to be completed by 2019 to 2020 okay so only out of these 99 we have finished with 54 projects from 2017 2018 and 44 45 projects are yet to be completed and it has to be completed by the year 2019 to 2020 right so see uh there are a couple of states 18 states so these are the states under this and uh under these schemes 99 projects identified under 18 states remember they might ask there might be questions on how many states there are okay so the <clears throat> the states are andhra pradesh assam bihar chhattisgarh goa gujarat jammu and kashmir jharkhand karnataka kerala madhya pradesh maharashtra manipur orissa Punjab, Rajasthan, Telangana, and Uttar Pradesh. Okay, so these uh, in this table, these are the actual facts that have, uh, for the developments or the progress in the LTIF. Okay. The central, uh, the section about forty thousand eight hundred and thirty crore, and they dispersed about seventeen. Uh, thousand seven hundred and seventy nine point two zero crore okay so the it is a 15 years tenor loans there the loans are funded through extra budgetary resources which are raised by the service government of indian bonds and it is sanctioned to the national water development agency so for the state for the state share this they sanctioned about thirty four thousand nine hundred thirty nine crore and disperse about sixteen thousand four hundred and nine uh, sorry 16,469.53 crore. It is for 15 years tenor loans at 6% per annum, where cost of loan to Nabart is higher than interest earned. Government of India bridges gap through interest subvention loans funded through market borrowings. And it is done through the state governments, right? Of the cumulative loans that has been uh, surveyed, uh, they, uh, this was the uh, uh, this was the result so of the cumulative loans which are san sanctioned across both central and share state share up to 31st march 2019 maharashtra gujarat uttar pradesh orissa and madhya pradesh they account for 83 percent of the share so that's a huge amount right and um, try to remember this fact because question might come on this as well right so and apart from these 18 states the government of india they also approved funding for this four more projects under this ltif which are the pulavaram project in andhra pradesh north coal project in bihar and jharkhand relining in sirhind and rajasthan feeder canal projects of punjab shapur kandi dam in punjab Right, so remember these are the four more new projects under this LTIF. So questions might come on these, so just be prepared. So going to the last question, uh, consider the following statements on NAP fins and state which of the is not true, right? So the statements are, number one is credit and other facilities for promotion, expansion, commercialization and modernization of agriculture and allied activities. The, during the year 2000. 19 2018 2019 about 1270 crore across covering 7 lakh rural households and there were more than 95 percent of its clients were women wholly owned by nabart okay there are actually five subsidiaries which are napcons napfins nap ventures napkistan and nap samrudri okay so these are the five so questions might come this is a very important section uh, i think it'll be very very beneficial if you guys know what these each of their um, objectives and what role they play uh, the share by the share by Nabard and the development updates till 2018 2019 all right so let's just uh, go through the options the options are one only which is number B is two and three only number C is one and two only and D none of the above E is all of the above. So the right answer for this is um, 
So the right answer for this is number one and two. Okay, because since it is not wholly owned by the Bart. All right. Um, okay. In the next slide, I've given some uh, the some of the additional information on all these subsidiaries. Uh, let's just go through all of it. Um, Napcons, their the headquarters in Delhi, right? And so questions might come on the uh, headquarters also and when it was formed or launched, right? And it's a consultancy services in all spheres of agriculture, rural development, and allied areas. It is Pan India and it is wholly owned by Nabart with authorized capital of 225 crore and paid up capital of 5 crore, right? And it, during the 2018-2019, they contracted business with 56.50 crore and generated income of about 45.88 crore. So for NAP Fins, Bangalore, they are the credit and other facilities done for the promotion, expansion, commercialization, modernization and of agriculture and allied activities right and um, the microfinance services as well and which is with or without the thrift and other facilities in both rural and urban areas and it is also pan india at present 16 states are operating right and with 144 branches remember all these fat all these data about all of these subsidies okay it's important so equity participation from nabart from government of karnataka kanara bank union bank of india bank of baroda and the nalakshmi bank and federal bank for this year 2018 2019 there was about 1270 crore across covering 7 lakh rural households okay and there were more than 95 percent of these clients were women right let's go to the napkistan it's the headquarters is in chennai okay and it's been functioning since 1997 and this credit it is for the promotion expansion and commercialization of uh, enterprises engaged in agriculture allied and no rural non-farm activities so the support for livelihood income generating activities by extending credit to panchayat level federations um, they're done by trusts societies and section 25 companies right so this is mostly done to support a producer organizations for team loan and working cat capital requirements it's also pan india and it currently operates in 16 states right and the so it's an equity participation from the Bard government of Tamil Nadu Indian Bank, Indian Overseas Bank, Tamil Nadu um, Mercantile Bank, Canara Bank, ICIC Bank, etc. Okay, and um, I'll try to find now its uh, what is the status uh, for the year or its development status for the year of 2018 to 2000. 19 if you guys have have read about it then of course you will know and if you guys know please don't forget to comment in the comment section and please let me know um okay the fourth one is nap samrudi which is um the headquarter is in mumbai and it's been functioning since uh 1997 right so what is what it does is that it's it credits facilities to individuals and legal entities for promotion expansion commercialization and modernization of enterprises and individuals which are engaged in the non-farm activities okay which includes the non fine microfinancing uh, msme housing education transport and all of these so it is also pan india but it is present Presently, it operates in 18 states. So remember, Napkistan and Napkins, they they are present in the 16 states. But this Nap Samruti, it is it operates in 18 states of the country. And as on the March 2019, the loan outstanding was about 452.09 crore, and against. 271.32 crore in 2017-2018, registering 41% growth. The question might also come on the growth of this NAP Samruti. So try to remember this figure, okay? The last one here is NAP Ventures Mumbai headquarter again Mumbai and it has been functioned since 2018 so this is the latest subsidiary right so question might also come which of these is which of the subsidiaries is the latest which of this is the oldest its functions okay so just be prepared with all of these facts uh, okay so it is an asset management company 
investment manager of the proposed Never Ventures Fund. The focus area includes the include agriculture, biotechnology, climate resilient agriculture, food processing, storage and logistics, rural development, and rural business. Okay, and it is also Pan India, and it is wholly owned subsidiary of Nabar. So till now there is napcons and nav ventures these are wholly owned by nabart and the rest are equity participated with uh, nabart and other banks and companies okay so the first scheme of the fund it has a target corpus of 500 crore okay, with an option of about 200 crore and it has to be invested in early mid-stage startups okay so these are all about the subsidiaries. Try to remember. Uh, if I've missed out any point, please don't forget to comment so that I know. It's an actually a huge report, so I couldn't cover all of the um, important topics as well. So I would like to request you all to please, please, please go through at least a summary of the important points of the report because questions can come from anywhere. And But I've just highlighted some of the important things, uh, points that you shouldn't miss out. So there's a chapter on the NABART management. So it's important to know the uh, the committee members, the board of directors and all of that. And the NABART, the sources of their funds, the usage of their funds and uh, as well as their investments. Okay, Don't forget all the uh, development funds. Like there are a couple of development funds. So the schemes as well and the... Uh, Watershed pro uh, development program, even that's important. Under that, also we have this tribal development program, uh, micro irrigation fund, okay, and then we have uh, Nabar infrastructure development assistant as well. So uh, n the number of projects sanctioned for it, and then how many. Uh, working states are there how much has been completed all of these funds it's very important to know the figures the warehouse infrastructure fund as well and the uh, food process the food processing fund dairy processing fund uh, in the fishery department and uh, okay so there's another one scheme again okay so it's pradhan mantri was Yojana, right? So if you know about this scheme, so please don't forget to drop by the command as well. And please let me know if you know uh, about this scheme. So if you're aware of all these, then it'll be very beneficial for you all. If you go in the initial pages of the report, you'll also find some of the uh, details of land holdings, such as the total operational holdings in India. Uh, it's see it's about around 145.73 million and the average land size is about 1.08 okay so it can we can just count it as 1.1 or 1.08 so and the grass cropped area the net zone area all of these facts try to jot it down keep on writing it uh, i'm not going to write it down here anymore so as i'm speaking please don't forget to write it down as well um okay the average land holding size is around 1.08 and the gross cropped area is about 198.36, okay. And the net zone area is about 140.13. Okay, so, um, yes, of course, the production, the area and the production of all the uh, agriculture crops, uh, they're uh, broadly divided into three, which is the first one is the food grain. The second one is the commercial crops. Uh, see, in food grains, the rice, wheat, maize, all of these will come. Okay, so you have to know their production. and met uh, It's mostly done in million tons, okay? And so you need to know the, uh, the data for all of these, all right? The commercial comes oil seeds and all of the uh, cotton, etc and for horticulture crops as well and the uh, in animal husbandry as well okay so try to remember all the facts the production the area how much uh, which one has the highest production okay the export as well okay the agriculture export so right now with that this data the um, rice had the highest export it was around six billion uh, us dollars right so try to down like all of these important the top and the lowest which one has the highest or the lowest export as well okay the highest states producing them as well as the lowest state state wise as well okay so yeah these are the all the things that I try to cover as you keep on reading it you'll try to get used to it and then you'll remember make notes revise again and again again and again because there are so many times that you might forget so i hope this session was beneficial for you all and i hope you all learned today all right so that's all for today and please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and if you've liked the video please don't forget to press the thumbs up button and please share it with your friends whoever is giving the exam and all the very best